Hi, and welcome back to the channel. If you're interested in doing text analysis and are maybe considering topic modeling as a solution to a problem that you're having, then look no further than this video. Here we're going to be talking about an alternative really to using the more traditional latent derelict allocation topic model from the GenSim library. And we're going to be using in this video instead top to vec which is a library I discovered about three weeks ago, thanks to a feed on Twitter from Philip Vallette over at Explosion AI, the creators of Spacey. Now, this new library, top to vec came out about two years ago, and the reason why I like it so much is because it allows for you to do really complex things with topic modeling very, very simply and only in a few lines of code. If you were to try to do traditional topic modeling, such as I've demonstrated on this channel before, you're going to have to do a lot of pre-processing and a lot of manual coding to get the topic model working correctly with your case study or your domain or set of documents. And for those of you who don't know, topic modeling is a way that we use unsupervised learning in machine learning terms to throw a whole bunch of documents at a model so that it can find patterns in those documents and cluster them into topics. These topics we then analyze and give labels to as humans. So how does this all work and why am I so excited about it? Well, I'm excited because you can do this in about three lines of code and have a really good model up and running that you can start to analyze your texts with. And this means that you can understand large collections of documents, maybe in the hundreds of thousands, in a matter of just a few minutes. And all this is done in a really kind of seamless pipeline that brings together a bunch of different Python libraries for you in one easy to use library. So top to vec wraps around Gensim, TensorFlow, and a few others, including UMAP. The very first thing that it has to do is convert all of your documents into numbers. Remember, computers cannot parse words, they can only parse numbers. And so it's done through a few different methods depending on which libraries you want to use. You can use doc to vec from Gensim, which I would encourage you not to use, or you can leverage new BERT embeddings from the Sentence Transformer library over at Hugging Face. What this means is that your documents will be converted as a whole into a single vector. This vector is a number that corresponds to meaning. In other words, what the document is actually about. The problem is these vectors are very high dimension, which means that they actually have a lot of numbers that relate to the meaning of all the words in your document. In order to understand what these documents actually mean as humans, this needs to be flattened out and we need to reduce the dimensionality of these vectors. There are a bunch of different ways for doing this in Python or through various algorithms such as PCA, Principal Component Analysis, but what this library does, top to vec leverages the new UMAP algorithm, which is considered one of the better algorithms out there for dimensionality reduction for most problems. And when this is done, the documents are flattened out and can then be graphed in two-dimensional or three-dimensional space, depending on the hyperparameters that you would set. Once all your data has been reduced in dimensionality, then comes the fun part. This is step three, where it uses HBD scan, which is able to then go over all of these plots on a graph in two dimensional space and find the areas of concentration. These areas of concentration or clusters indicate semantic or syntactic similarity. There is a presumption with topic modeling that documents that have an underlying similarity have an underlying topic. This is the latent or hidden quality of topic modeling, finding these hidden topics that actually might exist because of overlapping semantic or syntactic similarity. So what does this mean? Well, it means that documents that have similar words used in similar ways tend to mean or belong to similar topics. These clusters are then vectorized with the central most document in that cluster being the topic vector, with each moving outward of the circle around that topic vector decreasing in similarity to that vector's core or that central topic. Each word in that document type, so all the items of that vector, all the documents, are then calculated and added together. So you can actually have the top 50 most similar words that really kind of capture the meaning of that topic which means in theory that you can use these core words that make that topic particular and unique amongst all your data and your data set, those are gonna be the things that correspond to some kind of meaning. So if you see things like medicine, doctor, patient, all popping out in one cluster, that's probably gonna deal with medicine. If you see basketball, sports, baseball, football, those documents are probably dealing with the idea of sports in some way. 
So in order to understand all this, I really recommend that we just take a break from this video and we pop on over into Jupyter Lab to take a look at this in practice. In this video, we're going to be working with a data set that I've cultivated alongside my colleague Steve Davis at the Bitter Allo Project, which looks at different types of abuses of human rights in South Africa during the 20th century. So we're going to be working with a real data set that describes violence that occurred to victims of violence in South Africa during the 20th century. These sentences are about 20, or these descriptions are about 22,000 long, and each description is about one to three sentences. So it makes for a really good case study to analyze and use TopDevac to find patterns amongst all these descriptions so that we can find where certain individuals referenced in this data set have overlapping experiences with other individuals. Okay, now that we're in the Jupyter Lab in this notebook, let's go ahead and start working with our data. So I have the data stored in this data subdirectory under vol7.json. And in this video, we're going to be just using pandas just to load up the data. So let's go ahead and say uh, imp from panda, uh, import pandas as pd. And with that, we're able to really load up that JSON file kind of easily using pd.readjson. And we're going to say data backslash vol7.json. And let's take a look at this data. As we can see, we have two columns, names, which corresponds to victim names, and descriptions, which corresponds to a one to three sentence long description of the violence that they experienced during the 20th century. And like I said earlier, this comes from volume seven of the final report from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa. So let's go ahead and scroll down and start working with it. We're gonna have some docs that we're gonna grab, and these are gonna be the descriptions. So we can say df descriptions.to list, we can convert this to a list. And let's take a look at index zero, and we see that everything is printed off correctly and as we would expect. Now at this stage, we can go ahead and start working directly with the library top to vec. In order to use the library, all we have to do is say from top to vec, lowercase there, import top to vec. Notice the capital T and the capital V. Once we've gone ahead and imported everything, it's time to actually create our model. I'm going to say model is equal to top to vec, and I'm going to pass in all of these documents. This expects a string or a list of different strings, with each string being the unique document. Once you execute this, you might have to download some of the models, and that's okay. That will take a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and execute this cell, and we're going to notice that we have some data already being outputted for us. What this is telling us is that each step is being activated, and when it's printed off, it's complete. The pre-processing documents for training is taking care of things like lowercasing the document, removing stop words, uh, cleaning up some of the punctuation, and just overall pre-processing it so that our data is as tight and neat as possible to have the best results for clustering. The next process is creating the joint document slash word embedding. So this is going through and actually creating a vector representation for each document. Now at this stage, I'm going to pause the video and then we're going to cut back when this is done and talk briefly about these last three steps. And the model's done. This was able to process 22,000 documents that are each about three sentences long in relatively short order on my CPU. I'm not using a GPU here. These last few steps create the lower dimensional embeddings for the documents, that's the UMAP. And then the next step is finding the dense areas of the documents, that's finding those topic vectors. And then finally, it's finding those actual topics and creating those individual words for each topic. Once the model is loaded in memory after being processed through all these different docs, we're able to start interrogating the model. So the very first thing that we can do is we can grab the size and the quantity of all of our topics. So let's say topic sizes comma topic nums is equal to model.get topic underscore sizes. And we can print off topic sizes and we get this very long list. What this list is, is a list of all of the different topics that we actually have, or the different topics that are in our category. So we have 705 in index 0, 336 in index 1, but we can also print off topic nums, topic nums, and get the length of all of our documents. If we go down, we notice that we have 288 index. So we have 289 different topics in our in our model. This means that the model is able to identify 
289 unique topics amongst all this data set. And now at this point, we can start interrogating those clusters on a more micro level. So let's say we were interested in finding all, maybe the top 10 most common documents. So let's take a brief look up at this list. You'll notice that everything is structured so that the most common, the topic that has the highest frequency of documents in it is in position zero with the least common at the position negative one to so the last item in your index. This means that we can go through and rank all these on a most common to least common basis. So we can do this by saying topic words, uh, word scores, and topic nums, and I'm following the documentation here, is equal to model dot get topics. Now let's grab the top 10 topics right now. So what we can do is we can iterate over these three outputs with using zip. So we can say for words, scores, num, in zip, topic words, word scores, topic nums. So this is zip is a way of iterating over multiple lists simultaneously and creating multiple variables in memory uh, for each iteration of the loop. We can print off num, print off Let's do an F string here. Words is equal to words. So it's going to print off that list. And let's go ahead and just look at these two pieces of data. In index zero, we notice that we actually have these words as the most frequent. So these are the words that make this particular cluster unique. Son combo, etc. on down the list. Now that we understand kind of what the words are that make each of our topics unique, we can kind of do this with all of them if we wanted to. We could print off all the way up to topic number 288, and we could print everything off this way, but there's not really a need to do that in such a short video. Let's just focus on topic one for right now so we don't overload our memory in Jupyter Lab, and we'll just look at topic one for the immediate moment. So what we can do with this is we can actually start to look at topic one and the documents that correspond to it. The way in which we do this is we grab the documents that are relevant to our particular topic number. So what we're going to say is documents, document scores, document IDs is equal to model dot search documents by topic. Now this class allows for you to grab the individual, the individual uh, topic by its numerical corresponding value. So topic num equals zero would correspond to our to our topic zero. So in this case, the topic that corresponds to all of these individual words. What we can do with this then is we can print off a collection of documents. Let's just print off the top 10. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this from the repository so I don't have to type it all out. Again, this is coming straight from the documentation in GitHub. And we're able to print this off. When we do this, we can actually see the top 10 most similar documents in this cluster. So starting at the actual centroid of the cluster, the very center, and moving outward. With each document, you have a score. So the degree to which it corresponds to that core cluster. Document number 4729 has a score of 0.977, so 97% accuracy or like similarity to that cluster. The further down that you go, the further out you get away from the centroid of that cluster, which means you get documents that tend to be a little less similar. But if you skim down these just very quickly, you'll notice that a lot of these documents overlap significantly. It's because these victims all were at the exact same attack on the exact same day in the exact same place. What you're getting, therefore, is a common shared experience that you're able to easily isolate over 22,000 documents. More importantly, you're not doing this on a keyword basis. You're doing this on a BERT embedding vector basis, which means you're getting semantic and syntactic overlap, not just same word usages. So words like burn and arson would overlap in a way that they wouldn't overlap if you did something like term frequency, inverse document frequency, which just cares about the word itself and not its actual meaning. So all this allows for us to very quickly, in only a few minutes, cluster all of our documents so that we can start interrogating them. 
Now there's a lot that you can do here with top Devec, but hopefully after this video, you have a good sense about how it's useful, why it's useful, what it can do for you. And really the sky is the limit with this library. I haven't even begun to explore all of its features yet. And I already know that this is going to be a very important component in a lot of my workflows going forward. If you've liked this video, please like and subscribe down below. As always, thank you so much to all of my Patreon supporters. You all make this channel not only possible, but keep it afloat. All the money that you all use goes straight back into this channel so I can keep on producing really good content for everyone to benefit all across the world.